I started as a dirtbag graffiti writer from West Philadelphia, and all my role models, all my heroes that came out of graffiti in Philadelphia, they were all washed out on drugs or crime or drugs and crime for the really ambitious ones. So I took another path, which was just, I'm going to be creative and I'm not going to smoke crack. And one foot in front of the other, you know, we're talking 25 years later, I'm here today. In front of you, painting signs, doing the best I can, still not smoking crack. Today we are painting a sign for local hero musician Kurt Vile and his new record. I, I could never imagine having a billboard, you know, like a billboard advertisement. Well, this is even better, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's like just one step up, like, of self-promotion my whole life. It was like, like a running gag to just really, like, put yourself, like, Kurt Vile, Philly's constant hit maker, like, since 2003. The next level, they're like, all right, well, he's pushing 33. Might as well start painting giant signs of himself. Or having, you know, having minions do it. No, just kidding. Having sweet bros do it. <laughs> and I believe I've come I'm letting Steve do his thing. I did mine, and uh, that's how we connected. We're just like artists, you know, intersecting. I think what's amazing about art in Philadelphia is it just cuts through the bullshit. It's like, you know, you can't really just come out with a 300 word manifesto about why your work is doing this and doing that if it's not working. I think there's a necessary, fundamental simplicity that has to exist for work to survive here and to actually thrive and for people to take ownership of it. So the piece is really, it's, you know, point blank, it's just Kurt Vile and the title of the record. And, you know, it's sign painting, but we're doing it in a way that, you know, in this industrial area, there's wall painted signs, like the length of this train line. Really beautiful, real simple. And we're in that tradition where Kurt Vile is another object on the industrial landscape. And, you know, for all intents and purposes, that's our industry now. You know, music and art is, you know, two of the most powerful industries that we have here. The bottom is a, is a collection of icons based on the lyrics. And I'm just going to fill this in as I go, just one icon at a time. Kurt's a really visual, his lyrics are really visual. He's got a lyric that says, there's a place in my heart for all my friends. So I drew a couch with a beer next to it. And in another song, he talks about living the fantasy in, in infinity. So I drew that as an address on a mailbox. He combines lyrical imagery and uh, imaging lyricals beautifully. So it's nice to work with. These songs, they just stay with me for a long time. And this record in particular, I really wanted to get really deep with it. You never know exactly what it's gonna sound like, but I, I did know that these certain songs like had but, you know, real epic vibes, and I, I just wanted to take it further than I ever did before. It's, all, it's about trying to do what nobody else has done exactly yet, but making it listenable and pop sensible. Like, I started to joke and say the music was like prog pop, like this new genre. That's basically the idea behind this record. He told me. I think Waking on a Pretty Days is perfect. I think it really harkens back to the original uh, wall paintings that were in the neighborhood, advertising very explicitly goods and services that were on offer. And this, this wall sign very explicitly depicts goods and services that are on offer in the, in the form of Kurt, Kurt's music and uh, his album, Waking on a Pretty Days.